In closure, and in other languages, we often have this problem of unwieldy data structures. They're deeply nested, they've got tons of keys, and it's just a big mess. It's hard to understand what's in them. So what is the solution? What do we do about this? Hi, my name is Eric Normand, and these are my thoughts on functional programming. So I've been doing closure programming since 2008. I first started uh, doing common Lisp and then I moved to closure and I loved the data orientation in closure. The fact that there were so many different data types, uh, data structures in it compared to, to common Lisp, it was, it was great. And I, I already had this idea of data orientation, but I found that in Clojure it was much easier to do. It was much stronger. And so I would say that Clojure is a more functional language than, uh, than Common Lisp. And since the beginning, people have been complaining about uh, having these data structures where they especially working on a team, you, you don't even know what, like you know it's a map, but you don't know what's in it, and you forget like what keys you should be using to get stuff out of the map, and you have to, and like people have typos, and they're worried, you know, like they type the wrong keywords all the time, and they are getting nils back and they're not sure where the nils come from and then they eventually find that they forgot an S somewhere in their keyword and so that was why it was breaking. Like, I hear these complaints all the time and um, I've worked at companies where we had this problem uh, and I believe that this is one of the big reasons why uh, spec was created. People want some kind of checks that their data structures make sense and some they want documentation for what's supposed to be in the the maps that they're passing around and so it's definitely a problem since people are complaining about it but i've never had this problem not seriously of course i've made typos and stuff but i've never had this problem where you know, the, the data structures feel like they're out of control. Um, and I've been thinking about why it is and looking at people's code who are complaining to see like what's going on here. And I think it comes down to one thing and that is that people are not designing their data. They're not thinking about what things should go together, what makes sense to put together into maps. They're just, they're just cramming stuff in there. And this is a problem, I mean, I've heard in, in uh, like Ruby people get into this, where they have these classes that have hundreds of methods and all these all this state because it seems to make sense like everyone talks about the user class getting all these methods and all be it's like they call it the it's like a, a code smell called the god the god class or something because it just has everything and it just can do everything and what you should be doing is starting to pull those things out and having smaller classes and i think that's what happens with with closure maps is you just think, oh, I'll just throw this in a map and, you know, uh, I'll, I'll pull it out in another place. And what happens is you couple your code all over the place because this thing is producing a map, this part of the code, you know, part A, is producing this map with a certain structure. And then to get the values out of the map, this other part of the code has to pull the values out with that known structure. So it has, you're duplicating the structure in two places. And my first solution, the first cut, is to just build an interface. Build a smaller interface instead of saying, 
the data is its own interface. That's true. It's still true. The data is still its own interface. If you want to iterate through the keys and do all that stuff, you can. But as an entity, you should be thinking about all the things that you can do with this. You should be thinking about the meaning of this map. And by meaning, I mean all the things you can do with it. How do you make one? How do you access the, the values in it? How do you modify the values? Immutably, of course, you know, you create a copy um, with a modified copy. Um, and then also, importantly, how do these things combine with other things? How do they compose? We don't just throw them into a map. We, we have, I mean, we might throw them into a map, but we don't throw it into a map willy-nilly. We define how they combine with other things. And by define, I mean you write a function that does it. You write some code that is called uh, change name. Right? So if you have a person and you want to change the person's name, it takes a person and the new name. Now, I, this is, that's getting very granular, right? But if you're treating it like a person, meaning a person entity, not an actual person, but you're treating it as a person entity, and person is an important concept in your domain, that should be a first class operation. I would hate to see some asosh in somewhere else that is digging down into the person and, and changing the first name. Because that's not first class anymore. You need to respect that operation. It's a thing that you are saying is something that we need to be able to do to this person and you're just letting you're letting the chance and discipline dictate whether you can do that. because you're just treating it like a map. You're not treating it like a person entity anymore. Now, like I said, it's still a map. You're still passing a map around, but when you want to treat it like a person entity, you go through this interface and it's going to make everything easier because if you ever have to change the structure of this map, you're going through an interface and you should treat it like a map when you're just treating it like data like random data, like not, I don't know what it is. It might be a person, it might not. So when would you treat it like a map? Oh, you could have a generic function that printed a table, an HTML table to display on a web page of every key and value in your map. And it's generic, it works on any map and it's just for debugging, right? That is when you start treating it like a map. Now, I like keeping stuff as a map. Don't create a record, don't create a new class or anything like that. Because it is still data and at some point you're just gonna serialize it to JSON or Eden or whatever format. You're gonna send it to a database, right? But at, at, at certain points, you know that this is a person entity and I want to treat it as such. And you need a place to collect all the, the sort of collected wisdom of your system, the assumptions and the um, constraints that you set as a, as a developer, as the, as the company, you're saying, a person's name can, might be changed, and so we're going to have that operation. Or their um, address, they may move, you know, or um, we want to... Mm, mm, 
uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble thinking of an example, but there's all sorts of operations that your company says is important to the domain that they deal with. And you want to make an explicit place where those things go. And that place is called the interface. And so you should be skeptical if you see code that m treats a person entity and knows it's a person entity and it treats it like a map because the map operations are generic okay and it's it's too much it's it's um, coupling too much with the actual structure of of the um, entity itself so a, a good example of this is I, I have a friend who um, was doing uh, some work with it was quiescent but it's kind of like ohm or reagent where you're generating HTML and then on the on-click handler uh, you need to say how do you modify the data and one big regret that he has about his software is that they spread the they did update ins on the atoms all over the place so everywhere that they modify the database or everywhere where there's a handler that needs to modify the database, they just wrote, like, they just changed something right in the database using an update in. So they got a path to a specific point in that map, nest, deeply nested, and they changed it using update in. And so now, whenever they need to change the structure of their database, they have to go to every single one and modify it. And what he wishes they had done is every time they want to modify the database, they would make a function that did that modification. And then, of course, before you write that function, you check, do we already have a function that does this same thing? And so you would just reuse that existing function. So then if you need to change the structure of the database, you have a much l more limited set of things that need to change. And then over time, you might even start to refactor those functions because they look very similar. You can factor out the common bits into, so you have a smaller set of functions and, and sooner or later, you have a very tight interface into that database. But they didn't do that and they just have this big regret that it's, it's too much work to take on right now. But every time they have to make a change, it's a lot of work. And so it's, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's like you just need a place that defines what it means to, to, to modify this thing. Now, when we, when we are learning functional programming and programming functionally and talking about functional programming, we we often talk about data transformation pipelines. It's a very common pattern, and in fact, I need to make a note to make an episode about this. It's a very good pattern. But it's not the end-all, be-all. Because, like, let's say, we've been focusing a lot on, on, how, on operations that access or modify entities. But where the magic really starts to happen is when you define how to combine or compose I'm gonna, they're, they're the same you compose two entities together and so that's what I'm going to talk about next time if you want to get in touch I would really love to hear your comments your questions your complaints your compliments I'm at Eric Normand on Twitter, and you can also reach me by email, eric at lispcast.com. Subscribe, like, share it with your friends, because sharing is caring. All right, see you later.